Alrighty. Well, before we get into the uh, the new video, guys, what I thought I'd do is a quick what's in my bag section for when I head out on these uh, seascape photography adventures. First and foremost is camera body and my main landscape lens. Now I'm running a Nikon D800 camera with a 36 megapixel sensor. Absolutely love this camera. Uh, the, the detail you can pull out with it is just phenomenal. I mean, 36 megapixels, it's it's huge, and it, it does everything I need. Uh, landscape work, portrait work, commercial work, this body does it all. But for these seascape outings, it's absolutely perfect. And the lens on the front I'm running is a Nikon 16-35mm to f4 lens. Absolutely love this lens for landscape work. And I also pull it out occasionally at weddings and, and for portrait shoots when you, when you want that wide, dramatic look. It's absolutely an awesome lens. Uh, it's got built-in vibration reduction. Uh, which isn't so much of an um, issue with landscape photography because it is on a tripod, but that's my go-to for landscape photography. I also take along a Nikon 70-200 f4 lens. Now I just use this if I want to get up close and personal with, with something out in the landscape, or if I see a bit of wildlife, a, a seabird or something, it's an absolutely awesome lens as well. Now you've seen me talk about them lots, Nissi filters, I love these things. I have actual filter wise, at the square filters, I have a 6 stop and a 10 stop neutral density filters, and I also have a 3 stop graduated neutral density filter. So, guys, just getting delivery at the door. Awesome. Now, where was I? Nissi filters. I also have uh, the V5 holder kit which comes with a circular polarizer. Now it comes with a few adapter rings to be able to screw it onto 67, 72 and 77 mil threads. Now the 67 and 77 are all I use for the lenses I have, so that always comes with me. Yeah, doing seascape photography, you're gonna get salt, salty air, salty mist getting onto your lenses. I have a blower to blow off any dust and any big chunks of anything that might have settled on the lens. Also have a cleaning cloth and some cleaning fluid. Definitely a must when you're heading out towards the ocean. A cable release. Just a, it's just a cheap third party one. It does the job though. Um, I didn't need a genuine one for $100 or whatever they go for. This thing's like $20. Um, a simple press button. You can press and lock if you want to do some long exposure. Very simple, very cheap, very definitely needed. GoPro on a Joby Gorillapod. If you've never used these tripods, get one. They are awesome. Now, I just use this mainly these days for time lapse. Um, it's, it's just a simple rig to do it on. A couple presses of the button and it's off and running. Small, compact, waterproof. That's everything I need from the GoPro. I have here a GoPro three-way holder selfie stick thing. Oh, I use this as my videoing rig. I've actually got a, uh, a Manfrotto phone holder with a GoPro attachment on the back, so I've actually mounted that onto it. Um, now, I run the iPhone 7 in here to do most of my videoing these days, and I run a Rode uh, Video Micro microphone, I think it is. I don't have it with me. It's sitting on the camera that's filming me at the moment, but this is what it looks like. It's, it's a good little video rig. It's easy to carry around, it's compact, it's got that extra stretch when you need it, it just does everything I need. Last but not least, the tripod. Hey, Manfrotto, 055 tripod. Now it's the metal version, not the carbon fibre. It is quite heavy, uh, it's quite a few kilos, so this comes to seascape photography with me. Uh, I try not to hike with this because it does get tiresome after about half an hour of hiking as I found out. Now, it's just reminded me with that squeaky legs. I've got to clean this. It's been on quite a lot of uh, outings to uh, the ocean these days and uh, I haven't cleaned it. It's, the legs are getting gunked up. Everything's starting to uh, stick, which isn't a good thing when I'm using this at clients uh, for a client photo shoot. Oh, just a quick one as well. My 2018 calendar. Now, I mentioned it a few videos ago, but this is the actual product. A4 opens up to A3 in size, featuring 14 of my photos. So it's across 13 months, plus the front cover. So if you'd like one, please feel free to 
grab it straight through my website or contact me for details, etc. Free postage within Australia, or I can post it international if you have already gone in overseas, so that's awesome. So thanks for your support, guys. Uh, hello, buddy. Say so hello to the camera. Hi, camera. My little buddy. Awesome. Off you go. So that's everything that I take in my bag on these seascape adventures. So let's get into the new video. Cheers, guys. What an absolutely gorgeous evening to be heading down the peninsula. But I'll tell you what, I am looking forward to getting out tonight. It's it's been a long time in between shoots, especially um, especially ocean shoots, so it'll be nice. I'm looking forward to it. Well, I ventured down to Cape Shank, uh, just one of the southernmost points of the uh, the Mornington Peninsula. Now, what we've got down here is there's a there's a lighthouse here, which you would have seen in some of the shots. Uh, it's it's kind of difficult to get a nice composition on it because uh, it's all fenced off, so you can only sort of see it from a bit of a distance away. But there is a uh, a rock formation down here called Pulpit Rock. Now it's a it's a nice little spot, but it can be quite treacherous. Uh, if you get the wrong ocean swells and stuff, it's it's very dangerous down there. There's there's big swells. It's it's just the Southern Ocean coming raging in and swirling all around. And you get a few big waves there, and you, you've got to get out very quick. So it's always always good to check your tides when you're getting down here. Just coming up to a lookout now, just to have a look out, and I've got here just after high tide. It's, uh, sorry, sorry, just after low tide, and it's looking absolutely spectacular at the moment. I mean, it's, it's looking fantastic, guys. Uh, I'm gonna have nice access down there. The swell's, is, the swell's not too big at the moment. Uh, it's, yeah, it's just, it's just a nice, uh, relatively calm night for an ocean beach. The only downside at the moment is the, uh, the cloud cover. It's, it's high cloud, which I was hoping, but it looks like it stretches way beyond the horizon, which means I probably won't get that that lick of reds and oranges uh, as the sun dips below the horizon and casts its colours up onto the clouds. But hey, you are—you win some, you lose some. I'll—I'll uh, I'll keep trekking down this um, this path. You'll see shortly how much fun it is. <laughs> There's a lot of stairs. <laughs> uh, it's good to uh, check your fitness. <laughs> it keeps tabs on it. So anyway, I'm going to keep going and uh, I'll check in shortly. are at a uh, pulpit rock. I've made it down the, uh, <laughs> the lovely stairs to get down here. Now just having a look around for a, uh, for a composition that'll, that'll work nicely. Now, as I said, I'm down here at um, just after low tide, so the tide is it on its way in at the moment. Now, if you can see behind me, you can see what I mean by treacherous seas. Now, I've got to admit, this is the lowest I've ever seen the tide here. Um, it's probably about a metre, a metre and a half lower than I've ever seen it before. I don't usually come down here at very low tides, so that's probably why. But um, because of that, it's, uh, I was hoping to get some water, water movement, but it's actually a fair step down off the edge of the rocks. So what I'm thinking now is, you can see in the water here, because it's well, reasonably shallow, it's got a beautiful blue hue to it. So I'm thinking of using that in the foreground and just, just getting the rock nice in the background, running a, a couple second exposure just to blur that water out. 
get a little bit of a uh, little bit of a wave splashing in it and stuff. I'm just going to move away from the edge, by the way, because uh, <laughs> there's a few big waves coming in. All right, first composition sorted, I think. A little bit closer to the edge, looking more straight on to the uh, to pulpit rock itself. Now, what we've got is uh, just below the normal waterline is a nice bit of red seaweed and stuff in the channel. So what I'm trying to do is I'm running the three-stop graduated neutral density filter now just to keep the exposures as long as possible. So I'm pulling the sky detail, the highlights down as much as possible using the filter. It's giving me around about one and a half second exposure time now, which is perfect. So the ocean has calmed down a little. I've still moved away from where I was before. The sun's now dipped behind some uh, thick clouds, so it's uh, softened the light off a lot and allow me to run the one and a half second exposure, which is working well, so. Just waiting for the right wave, I guess you would say. teach myself again after teaching it to myself many times is when you're out on these shoots it's easy just to to put yourself under a lot of pressure a lot of stress to to get a decent shot so what you find yourself do is what what I find myself doing is darting from one composition to the next to the next trying to find a shot that I am 100% happy with right there and then so what I've had to teach myself again is just to just to sit down and take a breath in between compositions just just think about what you're doing watch the watch the waves enjoy the weather enjoy the night you know just just sit back and relax I mean you know honestly that's what we're out here for isn't it just to just to enjoy the moment to capture the moment to to share our adventures with everyone else through edit through the images we create just gonna sit here for another minute enjoy this and uh, get back into it in just a sec guys Sneaking in a quick vertical composition here. Just having another wander around, funnily enough, and came across a little inlet uh, away from the, the main channel that runs around Pulpit Rock. And there's a lot of flow and backflow that comes through here, creating some nice whitewash. So I'm tipping this is going to get nice movement uh, through here, just a nice misty, nice misty uh, water. So I'm just keeping an eye on the waves again. Now, what I'm running is my circular polarizer from Nissi, as well as a 3 soft graduated filter. Now, I am bracketing my images here because the rocks in the foreground are very black. They're, they're really dark, so if I expose for the sky, even with the 3 stop, the black comes out with next to no detail, and as soon as I try to recover that detail in post-processing, it becomes very noisy. So, I do bracket these, and I'm also focus stacking, so taking one set of exposures focusing on the rock and one set focusing on the foreground. And that'll allow me to blend in the foreground, keep that nice and sharp as well as maintaining the detail from the HDR um, processing. So I'll just run that off now. Now what I'm running is the, the shortest exposure is four seconds and then it'll be uh, actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to adjust my aperture back to f11 and my ISO back to 100. Now that will allow me down to one second, two second and four second brackets, which is a lot more manageable. Um, the water's gonna be exposed correctly at the four seconds, so I'll get a decent amount of flow 
uh, move, you know, water movement in that shot. So I'll be happy with that. So I'm just going to run these off now and uh, get cracking onto another spot. I'm just going to duck over and get that waterfall that I was talking about earlier, just in front of the rock, and uh, I think that's it for the night. And I'll be uh, I'll be out of here. I just snuck in one last composition there, another vertical one. This is the final image now. Now I didn't uh, didn't talk you through it at the time because uh, the swell's getting quite big at the moment, and I was I was ducking down to where I shouldn't be, I guess you would say. Uh, I was yeah quite low to where the water was, so I was I was being very cautious, watching the waves, getting the exposures right, etc. Now I just realised I've come the wrong wrong way, and I can't climb down that rock. Uh, the lighthouse is on at the moment. You never know, I might get another image on the way back up. Nah, I doubt it. It's getting dark anyway. Look guys, thanks for coming on this adventure with me. This is uh, one of my favourite spots down this way for um, a nice bit of seascape photography. It's just, it's amazing just watching the waves coming crashing in and, and you know, just, just the adventure of it. You, you've, got to, you've got to keep your wits about you when you're, on these, when you're out on these spots. So thanks again, guys. Um, I'll catch you soon on the next adventure, eh? I'll catch you around. I warned you about the oceans. <laughs> I was setting up for a composition where I thought I was more than safe from the swells. Yeah, it splashed me in the camera. Not too much, thankfully. Uh, it was just a little bit of a little bit of a splashing. So, uh, got to keep my eyes open. Uh, this is. <laughs> I can't believe I've just told you to be careful. I've just told you about how treacherous it gets here and I go and get wet. I never learn. That's uh, alright, I'll, uh, I'll try for that angle again, eh? <laughs> <laughs>